Praise the Lord, my friend. I'm Dr. Thomas Manton IV, coming to you live on Dominion Life. Praise the Lord. God said to me yesterday that I should speak to you today about organization. I wanted to do the broadcast last night, but uh, I was quite busy. And I thought before I do our normal uh, Sunday meeting, I'm going to do this little segment for you here. The Lord said in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, I will the, the, the prophet said, okay, to the Lord, I will stand my watch and set myself on the wall, rampart, and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Do you know what that tells us about the boss is he's very meticulous and strict and he expects a lot. You know, correction only comes from a person. It can only come from a person. Either they're a teacher, they're a father, or they're a mentor, or they're a leader, or they're, you know, an employer or owner of something. How to do things better. But this originally came from the nature of God. Imagine that. And the Lord answered this one, the writer Habakkuk, and he said to him, Write the vision and make it plain. On tablets. In other words, well, you can write it down in your notepad, your iPad now. My, I have my smartphones and I use them. Uh, I love the Samsung Note 3 because of the big screen. I have two of them and I'm, well, I, I actually can type notes in WhatsApp and WhatsApp myself on the other phone. Praise the Lord. Unless I'm using the Evernote or the, you know, S Note or whatever. Um, there's so many ways to document what God is saying. And I got really challenges stirred up by watching people use their tabs and all that you know and I got a little uh, tab laptop that has a fold over screen it's touch screen now, I'm not using that so much but it's a bit bigger it has a full keyboard so it's like a hybrid uh, but it's good to document it's good to use um, I love my book you see it on the bottom and another book here on uh, prophetic keys to successful living and then inside of it <laughs> is the Bible and I'm just using that to hold it because I want to share some points out of my two books. Praise the Lord, the laws of success and also prophetic keys of successful living. And I've shown that to you before. Um, and I love holding my, my Bible here, okay? But, you know, we can put all these things in tabs. So I don't want to act like I'm on the phone. So, yeah, I'll do that in the future. Though I want to warn you in advance. I may look like I'm on the phone talking, but really I'm reading notes to you. So before I do that... This is still great. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was writing notes, you know, on a message in my phone with my stylus pen. So it's good. I'll tell you why it's good. Let me tell you why. So you see, some people think, well, it's just stylish to have an iPad or a smartphone or whatever. No? You got to get past that and get into the functionality of it. See, the, the reason God made technology, and even before there was such things, God spoke to his prophet Habakkuk about writing the vision down, okay, somehow. They didn't even have maybe an ink pen at the time. You know, maybe they dipped it in something or he had to uh, carve something in a piece of wood or, you know, that they call it a tablet. You know, Moses had the tablets of stone and God put his own finger on it and wrote on it. So he didn't think uh, that he needed a PC or a laptop. Or, 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 a, or a Samsung Note phone, or an iPhone, or something like that. He didn't need it. But God made technology for us to use so we can have a lot of information. I want to speak to you today on a topic that's very, very potent and very, very life-revolutionizing. Re uh, it'll revolutionize your life in every way possible. I want to talk today about the power of organization. The power of organization. The Lord spoke to me, the two, word, two words yesterday, organization, and then I thought about organized, but then he said organism. He said, what's an organism? I said, it's the thing that's alive, that has, has life to it, has purpose to it. You know, and even the organs in the body function, okay? Organization is sometimes the most overlooked thing, but yet it's one of the most powerful things to have. And I'm going to get into that in a second. Let me finish the scripture. The Lord answered the prophet and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that the one who reads it can run with it, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and not lie. 
Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Then he said, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. See, they think they can, people think they can do anything. But God is the, is the source of organization. God comes to a prepared life. God comes to set up a habitation uh, where the visitation is received well and prepared for. I, I had a, a message I preached some time back, uh, quite, quite some time ago. Uh, turning a visitation into a habitation. I think I have those archive of the messages in America. We can, we can maybe re reproduce those, re-release those. Very powerful. Turning a visitation into a habitation. It's like the visitation is like, an, is like a touch of God. It's all, we, we can also liken it to opportunity. But then the possibility and potential reality of not just being in the potential form, but something to actually manifest and be, become um, a solidified, solid thing is when you prepared yourself. Now you have some order and you have some structure and some organization. He said that the soul of the proud is not upright in him. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. But he said, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith faith. My friend, I want to tell you something. The Lord has been dealing with me, and I want to pray for you. You know, each one of these messages that I'm doing has a specific theme and a specific prophetic uh, thrust and punch and announcement and impartation. And I believe by the anointing and the grace of God that's upon my life and ministry, God will touch you to build a great organization. Can you say amen? Some, you know, can I tell you, I, I thought about, I was thinking about this last night, the Lone Ranger, maybe he has his, uh, his assistant Tonto, his friend, you know, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, even Batman <laughs> in the movie had Robin, <laughs> and he had his old butler Alfred, right? <laughs> but I mean, they didn't really do anything. Well, Batman saved, the, you know, he saved, you know, the superhero, supposedly saved the cities and all that, he had his assistant, but it never talks much about uh, where he was, but although Bruce Wayne, you know, the character who played, uh, turned into Batman, right? He had his, he was a rich man. He had his castle, he had his staff, he had his people. So maybe there's something more to it than we even see. But there's a principle called the Lone Ranger. You know, just doing everything by himself. But I found out something, and I had an apostle friend of mine remind me of this. Nobody succeeds alone. You need proper help. Another man of God, dear friend of mine in America, what a great man of God. He said something powerful. He said, uh, I was reading this yesterday online. He said, whenever I have discomfort, I, I ferociously look to see what it is so that I can remove it. When something constantly irritates you, it's a sign to you that something is out of place and out of order. I love the word order, I love the word organization, I love the word organize, I love the word excellence. You know, these are words we need to love if you want to have something. And then to, in order to gain something great, you also have to hate something. You can't conquer what you don't hate. You can't conquer what you fear. You can't conquer doubt, you, you know, if you have doubt. You, you can't conquer with doubt. You have to conquer doubt if you want to live without doubt. And then you could do great things. He said, the just shall live by his faith. Come on now. Organization is powerful. I was thinking about Bill Gates and Microsoft. I was thinking about Larry Ellison and Oracle. I was thinking about Steve Jobs and the Apple Company. I was thinking about uh, Warren Buffett and the Berkshire Hathaway Company. I was thinking about you know, Donald Trump and the Trump Organization. And I was thinking about even preachers like T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar. I've been to their centers. I've been to the, the Potter's House in Dallas. I've been to their uh, Pastors and Leaders Conference. And you see how, how excellently they run things. They have tremendous staff. T.D. Jakes will scatter. No, he has, he, has, he has a few dollars in his pocket, okay? But he scours the world to look for the great people, to have a great organization. And then they also produce. And then you wonder why it's kind of no accident that they become so... Uh, exalted and so successful because they have other people on the team. Joyce Meyer is writing books. Do you think she writes with a hat, with an ink pen, or types with her, you know, even ten fingers if you do, or a few fingers, whatever, to write all the books that she writes? No, she has a literary team. She has, I heard her ministry has almost 500 employees 
And their budget is in the millions of dollars every year. Part of that is to produce and create books. She gets the revelation. She has the teaching. She has it put. And I'm looking for people to help me with that. You see these two little books? I typed them with my own hands. Um, <laughs> I might have had a few things transcribed from audio dictation, and then I laid all these out, you know, so I, I'm not a stranger to working. But these little books are just something, you know, that I have right now. But I want to I wanna write hundreds of books. And I've had people approach me, so I say this with a grain, you know, with a little, uh, take a little uh, sip of something sweet, you know, to, to keep, keep myself happy. Um, about it, but if you have a gift of literary excellence, uh, we're going to check you out now. We're not going to just take any, any old buddy. I've had people come say, I'm a writer, I can blog, I can do this, I can do that. And very few have really been able to do. I've, I've thought of two or three people that we've had that have really helped to put things online and all that. But see, so this department, uh, and it's very practical what I'm saying, is, is needing of, uh, of staff. Then you have people that can't get out of their own way. Why are they employed? Why are they, why are they doing it? And the Lord spoke to me a few things. I'm talking about organization, but I want to throw in a little point here about why some people don't get blessed, why some people don't catch the anointing. Did you ever wonder about that? I do every day of my life. Why do you have people around the midst and they don't catch the flavor? They don't catch the flair. They don't catch the touch. They don't catch the fire. They don't catch the impartation. They don't flow in the glory like I, like I am in, in my ministry. Okay, and, and in, in uh, brilliance of thought and planning and doing all these things. And the Lord spoke to me and said, because some are hirelings. They're hirelings. They just want to survive. That their whole thing, their whole mission is just to survive. They're ignorant. They're low level in their mentality. They're not spiritual enough. They're not thinking about the, how to promote the, the, the brand name of, of Christ Jesus in the earth. They're not thinking about how to produce and how to function and how to do something better. They're just moping around with their insecure self, trying to survive as a hireling, the money that they get. And I want to, I, sometimes I think I want to ask people, um, do you want to stay poor? Do you like your poverty? Because that's, that's, that's in your future if you don't want to catch this flow. God gave you an opportunity to come our way. And uh, it looks like you're not taking, taking up on it. You know, I wonder if some people, they really have roadblocks uh, inside, the, inside the, the coconut shell here. <laughs> I wonder, and, and I'm praying for people. Amen. Uh, okay, you might have, and this is very appropriate to somebody, and to you even, you might have an environment that's not conducive for the miraculous flow that you need. You may not right now have all of the people, all of the destiny helpers that you need to help get you on the path, amen, to where God wants to take you. But that doesn't mean he's not going to do it. It doesn't mean he's not going to do it. I mean, you have to start today. Don't ever feel bad. Listen to me now. This is, I'm talking about birthing an order, birthing an empire, birthing an, an organization that'll shake the world, that'll touch the world, that'll produce all around the world. Or if you have a vision for your business in the local front or your career, your family, even if you're a preacher, if you're in your ministry, amen, uh, uh, you, you know, this, this principle will revolutionize your life, okay? Don't despise the flood of glory of revelation that's pouring through you, the desire that's in your heart, the passion, even the frustration that you feel, something that needs to be fixed, something that needs to be uh, put in order. Don't despise that. Take it. Take it. Now, every day, begin to get more motivated. You know, some of us have opportunity, but we don't turn them into possibility. We don't turn them into probability and reality because we're not taking enough action on a given opportunity. I did another program, you may have seen it, on, on the power of opportunity and divine opportunity. You know, opportunity knocks on everybody's door, but it can only really enter and stay and work with the prepared person in the house of the prepared one. The one who knows how to act with it, seize it, take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, the, the kingdom of heaven permits us to be aggressive and to take it by force. Amen. In Genesis 1, 26, the original command to man was, I made you in my own image after my own likeness. Now you rise up and take dominion and be fruitful and multiply and eat these things. And then uh, God saw Adam was alone and he made a help me for him, the destiny helper, who he named Eve. God called them Mr. and Mrs. Adam. You know that was the first corporation? 
<laughs> you think God's not corporate? <laughs> let me let me let me beg to differ. God is very corporate. He's very organized. I, I want to uh, talk for just a second from my 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 book here, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, and I want to get a little bit into the laws of success uh, in the few moments that we have here. Order. I I, I wrote this a little chapter on order. Organization. Okay, this is the definition of 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 a functional application of what uh, organization will do. Organiz the Lord said to me, organization, these are all prophetic keys, by the way. Mm -hmm. Organization is the key to increased revenues. You know why? When you have a system that you know how to make, manage, and multiply money. I was talking about the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18, let's look at it. I, the Lord thy God, I have given you power to get wealth, to establish my covenant, my covenant, God has a covenant. In other words, he wants it to be organized. He wants his covenant to manifest. You can't just manifest something with nothing. You know, you can't just stand by yourself and be all, you know, have so much on your head. I, I'm, a, I'm a product of that. I have, I have so many pro. I feel good now. You see, I'm under the anointing here and I'm flowing and I'm happy. I have the victory. Some, there's a scripture that says, if you faint in a day of adversity, then your strength is, is not there. It's abated. It's not there. I've been through things in my life and people have said, they said, they said they would have died had they been encountered such adversity and persecution and attack like I have. And I stood all through it. And you see, I'm here, I'm blessed. God has blessed my life more than ever. You know, success is the, T.D. Jake said, and it's, it's not his own quote, it's, it's an old saying, but uh, he, he did preach it one time. He said, success is the best revenge. He said, the haters are out there. He says, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord splits you, you know, meaning in the blessed assurance, on the way out. Just move, keep moving. Another friend of mine says, uh, an apostle of God says, if you mind the opposition too much, you'll lose your position. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Just let God be God and let every man be a liar. Let God be of the truth that he's in you. Whatever he instructs you to do, do it with all your heart. And after a while, you know, you may go through a few things. I've been through some things. A lot of people have been through things. You, 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 you know, it'll be proven of who you really are and the fact that God has really called you, ordained you, and sent you. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to stick with your business plan. You need to stick with that vision that's in your heart to build an organization, to, to build something, you know, your brand, your product. Your, your, your successful life, but it's going to come by organization. The organism has organs. The organs need to flow in order for the organism to be in good health and to be, you know, moving and alive and at, at, at um, maximum potential bearing, maximum creativity, maximum productivity. Ultimate, ultimate. Creativity, the ultimate, the, the, the highest level. Amen. The organs need to be functioning right. Now, you consider an organization like that. It's made up of a group of people. A corporation is just that. It's a conglomeration of people built in a system, and they're functioning, each one producing their function, and the whole thing is growing. Even God said where there's unity, Psalm 133, let's look at that, said where the blessing uh, comes is to the people that are unified and in order. He said the head, the anointing will come upon the head and flow down even to the body, and it'll move and flow. And then there's a place of unity, a community of unity. Commun it's just, you know, calm, commune, you know? <laughs> Committee. <laughs> come together, <laughs> C-O-M, you know? E. Praise the Lord. Come unity. God said, I will command the blessing there. So there's something about people functioning in productive work and brilliance of thought and creativity under God's anointing that produces so much. You can't mistake it. It'll tangibly manifest. But then on the other hand, there are people that are disorganized, disheartened. Uh, woe is them. I didn't say me because I'm not. You know what I mean? And they're just going trudging along through life trying to survive. These, they're like, some of them are like parasites. They're hirelings. They just want to get some to survive. If your goal is survival, man, you got a poverty mentality. You know, some people say, well, 
So one lady wrote me and said, well, January's broke time. Because why did you go spend your, the money that you had on Christmas? Because you think that's the cultural thing to do. You got to buy presents. You got to what? What if you just went away and hide and hid and prayed and started a business around Christmas time? Because, you know, when I like when the city gets empty in the holiday, that's my time to shine. No traffic. I go here. I go there. There's no chaos. There's no stress of that. It's just like all the thing is open. All the people went away. Now, I know people need a holiday. I know people need a rest, but I do it in reverse. If I want to take a holiday, I'll, when it's the busiest time in the city, that's when I'll go out somewhere, and there's nobody there, but they're all over here. I want to go where I can have that peace. If I want to see animals, if I want to see the mountains, if I want to see the beach, if I want to travel somewhere, or, or if I'm uh, doing some ministry, I may have some time to, uh, to have a little time. I, I went to Australia to preach, and I'll tell you the highlight uh, the, the meetings were awesome. I did many cities. I did Sydney. I did Townsville. I did Cairns. I did, uh, ooh, uh, in the middle of Mount Isa, the middle of the Outback. We went there. It's one of the hottest places in the world. And the largest mine on planet Earth was right across the road from the church where we were preaching. And the meetings were awesome. But in the midst of that time, there was a pastor, an Italian man, and they speak with the perfect Australian uh, Aussie accent, you know. Because they're, they're born and raised there. They're mango farmers. And they have in the mountains, in the beautiful tropical place, like uh, uh, 30,000 mango trees. And they grow these mangoes. They're called the KT mangoes. Is like a name. I don't know if it's initials KT or what. I didn't really ask. They call them the KT mangoes. I just said, okay, KT. Whatever. I didn't even really ask what it meant. But I did eat them. And I'll tell you. We, they sliced, they're so big and juicy. You sliced a whole bowl, a big bowl like that, it was in the fridge. I took the bowl, I, I confess, <laughs> I ate the whole bowl of mango. I did it several times. They were the most delicious mangoes I've ever had on the planet Earth. He said they're all pre sold. I mean, the minute, it was like the end of, the end of February, early March, and that's the time I had just come in March, just after the, 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 they were at the end of there. They had some left for themselves that had already shipped out a lot. And they said they're all pre-sold except the ones that we keep for our local, for our family and friends and, you know, here. Uh, they shipped them out and they're pre-bought because they're the best in the world. And we went through the tablelands and the mountains and the waterfalls and the bird sanctuaries and the butterfly sanctuary and the, see the animals, you know, the kangaroos and the wombats and the wallabies jumping around. And I tell you what, it was just amazing. And I had that time to, and I hadn't planned it. It's just this man said, pub. He said, Pasta, please be our guest, you know, come to my other home in the tropical place there and we'll have a place for you there and we'll, I can take you, give you the tour. Hey, it was heaven on earth, I'll tell you. And I got a little time to rest. So this thing about the cultural thing of spending your money and then, you know, people actually say it with their mouth. I don't have a broke January. I've never had a broke January. I'm never broke in January. I'm Matter of fact, I could be richer in January than I was in December because everything keeps moving. I don't work on that system, okay? I'm talking about the organization of heaven on the earth. You need to have the order. So it, it works in many ways. You have to have the spiritual order where God is with you and moving with you. Then you have to have the people, the organization, the corporation, the help, the structure. Because a healthy organism, a healthy life, the organs flowing. Amen. And even the organ can play the music, nice melodic music, and you can feel happy when you're doing well. And if things are not flowing with people the right way, you need to change the, uh, rearrange the human furniture, I like to call that. It's okay to do that, you know? You know how to disconnect when you need to. And if God keeps scratching you, you know, and keeps poking you and you're feeling something's out of place, then God has something better for you. I want to pray and declare and prophesy over your life that God is going to uh, just give you such a strong organization. I'll continue this, but I, I'm, 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 I'm almost out of time here. I, I tell you, the Lord is going to give you this power of order. We must have his divine order to succeed. Praise the Lord. And in 1 Chronicles 15, verse 13, the Lord broke out. The Bible says he broke out against certain men when they did not seek and implement God's proper order and pattern. God has an order and a pattern on how he works. Here's another thing. If you see people in the world that are successful in business, you need to emulate that. You need to find, okay, you see a successful pastor and he's very organized and he has teams and he has people and all that going on. 
then you need to learn from that. Say, I'm going to do this. He's on. They're on. They're timely. They have sharp people in the leadership. They're progressive. They're doing stuff. They're getting things done. They're innovative. They're moving. That's a, that's not by accident. Those people were chosen to do that. Even the Bible commands that you don't just take anyone. He said in Acts chapter six. Okay, let's look at that. There were deacons, the diaconate, that the deacons that were ordained. He said they had to be wise, full of the Holy Ghost, wise and faithful. And, and wise, okay, Let, let's not forget that. That's probably the most important. Well, faithful comes before that. That's important. You can, you can be wise and not faithful and mess things up. You can be faithful and not wise and you mess things up. So all of these characters, and, and men of ca good character, okay, and serious spiritual men. But, you know, they had ideas. They had things uh, that they were able to implement. You need people like that. Father, I, I got I to gotta go. I, I'll come back to you in another segment on this. I'll continue in this. Where there's not God's order, there's disorder. Everything that is, that is not in his order is in disorder. And in the realm of the spirit, things are even organized. Look at the way God made everything. And God wants to also make your life, make your company, make your ministry, make your life a habitation of excellence with power. Amen that like you've never seen in your life. Father, I stretch my hand out to my friend watching right now, that you will raise them a house. You will raise them an order of their own. You will raise them a business. You will raise them a company, a corporation, or several. You'll raise them the ministry and the ministries. You'll raise them to be organized because the power of organization makes you become organized. Organization becomes your like your middle name and when that happens, everything will begin to increase and come into success. Father, the people that are the destiny helpers, supporters, friends uh, of our ministry here, of Dominion Life, of Dominion International, Thomas Matthew IV, I thank you that you're going to cause also your favor, Lord, to uh, uh, touch people to help us. And also for me to help many more millions of people around the world. Even these cameras, even this studio was put together by structure and organization because I had the dream, but I actually implemented it. And now is the time for implementation for you. Let the favor of heaven and of God Almighty come upon you, my friend, to build him an organization for his own glory. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew IV. We'll see you right here next time on Dominion Life. God bless you richly. messages available on DVDs are Benefits of Kingdom Excellence, Glory Carriers, Kill the Middleman, Laws of Success, Crossover, God's Path to Promotion, Prophecy Vision Cast for Kenya, Attributes, Functions and Leadership of the Holy Spirit, among others. Miss One, Miss Blessings. Thank you.